Let's take a few minutes now to look at an application of integrals in calculus, and that is how to calculate the volumes of three-dimensional objects. And in this video, we're not going to dive deep into the mechanics, but rather I want to help you develop an intuition for looking at a two-dimensional region, visualizing that three-dimensional solid that results from using that region, and then setting up an integral to measure its or to calculate its volume. And I have six examples. In this first one, what I want to do is take this region, this blue region that's formed by a curve, and revolve it about the x-axis. So we're going to go about the x-axis, and it's going to create a vase. And here's how to visualize that vase. So here is the two-dimensional region. I have a generic strip drawn down it. And of course, that strip is free to move, so it could change its lengths. And I'll go ahead and do that for you now. So there's an infinite supply of these infinitely thin strips. And I'm going to rotate now so we can see this in three dimensions. And when we revolve this region about the x-axis, here's what happens to one strip. It forms a disk. And a disk is just a circular face with some thickness. And the circular face is pi r squared. The thickness is a little change in x, which we call dx. And collectively, all these disks form the volume of the vase, or form the vase. And I want to show you that vase. So here is the lateral surface of that vase formed by the outer function or the upper function. And then here is its right final face. And then its left face is at the other end. So whatever's inside there is the volume. And all those disks are forming the volume. And here is the contour of one of the of the disk, so you can sort of see them moving throughout the, the volume of this vase. And it's this image that I'm hoping that you'll be able to start to see when you look at a two-dimensional region. So I'm going to go back to the two-dimensional region now, and let's see if we can set up an integral for its volume. So here is one circular face, and then when you give that face some thickness with a dx, a little change in x, you now have the volume of one disk. And then if you integrate, you're adding up all those volumes. And there's an infinite supply of these infinitely thin disks. So we're going to be integrating pi r squared dx from 0 all the way out to 6, the right-hand endpoint. And when I type this into my calculator, I'd probably remove the pi. I like to keep as little inside the integral as necessary. And then rather than type all of this in rapid parentheses and square it, I would probably put this into y1 so that in my integral on my home screen, I could just do y1 squared dx. And if you do that on your calculator, you should get a volume of 80.890. And that would be cubic units, whether it's centimeters cubed or inches cubed, because we're getting volume. So let's look at another example now. Again, we're going to revolve around the x-axis. But this time, our region is not going to be bumped up against the x-axis. There's going to be some spacing here, so it's going to be, have a hollow interior. And what we're going to get is an image of an artery with some plaque inside it. And I want to show you that. So I'm going to move over to the three-dimensional graphing and pull up that picture. So there is our region. There is our strip. I'll animate the strip so that it's moving. So let me go ahead and do that, just to remind you that um, we have an infinite supply of these strips. Now we're going to rotate into three dimensions. And when that region gets revolved around this x-axis, um, it is going to form, each strip is going to form what's called a washer. So it is a large circle and a smaller circle formed by the two curves and the area between them. And then that washer has a little bit of thickness, that little change in x. Um, and you probably have seen washers at your house in a toolbox perhaps that you have somewhere in your house. Um, and there's an infinite supply of these washers that are infinitely thin that make up the volume of this plaque in this artery. And let me show you that now. So here's the arterial wall, the arteries. That's the outer surface of the artery. And then you can see that there's plaque inside. That's the pink. And here is the arterial, uh, or sorry, the plaque wall inside it. And everything between the artery wall and that plaque face is, is the uh, plaque whose volume we're trying to get. And I'll put in the first washer on the, on the right and the first washer on the left. And then you can see that blood can still flow through this artery. There's still an opening here, but it's certainly much smaller than it used to be 
because of the plaque. And we're going to measure the volume of the plaque. Um, so we're going to get the area of this face, give it some thickness with dx, and then integrate along the entire length of the artery. So I'll go back to our handout. And so when this strip is getting revolved around the x-axis, we're creating washers. That's pi big radius squared minus pi little radius squared. Multiply by dx to give that washer its thickness. And then we're adding up all those washer volumes. And when I type this into my calculator, again, I would factor out pi. We're integrating from 0 to 6. That's the length of the artery, this little part of the artery. And then I would put this outer radius in y1, and I would put the inner radius in y2, just so I'm not typing all that mess inside my integral. And then I'm just integrating y1 squared minus y2 squared dx. And that volume turns out to be about 178.274. And again, we're working with cubic units here. So you can, on whatever measurement you're using, to measure your lengths cubed. All right. Now, let's do one more um, revolution um, with a region. But this time, we're going to take a region and revolve it around the y-axis. So here's my region again. It's formed between two functions. We're going to take this vertical strip, and we're going to revolve it around the y-axis, so a, uh, an axis parallel to the strip as opposed to perpendicular. And what we're going to get is a child's toy top. And I want to show that to you next. So here is the region. Here is one strip. I'm not going to animate it because I want to first show you the shell that's formed. So it goes around the y-axis and it forms this shell. I'm going to rotate it so you can sort of see it a little better. And that shell has a height and it has a circumference. And the area of the face of this shell is the circumference times the height. Now, every shell has a different radius and a different height. And now I'll animate that for you. And you can see all these different shells. And they'd all be nested together to form the volume of this three-dimensional object. And here is that three-dimensional object, this child's toy. So there are the two surfaces that get formed above and below. So basically, we're taking a whole bunch of shells, nesting them together to form this volume. All right, so let's see if we can model the volume of this toy. So um, the area of the face of a shell, the surface of the shell, is just the circumference times the height. We're going to give it some thickness with the dx, and then we're adding them all up by um, integrating. Now, the radius of any one shell is this horizontal distance right here. So a strip out here would have a bigger radius than this strip up close. So R, the radius is x. The height of the shell is just the difference in these two functions. And again, I would probably put them into y1 and y2. So the height is y1 minus y2. And now we'll make our substitution into our integral. I'd pull out the 2 pi since it's constant. We're integrating over the interval 0 to 3.677. That's just where these two curves intersect. And then we're integrating the radius, which is x, times the height, which is just y1 minus y2. And if you evaluate that on your calculator, you should get about 78.915 units cubed. So we've looked at disks, washers, and shells. And those are the results of rotating a region about an axis. The final three examples I want to show you are what happens when you don't revolve the region but instead you build geometric shapes on the region. And the first one I want to look at is building a stereo speaker. So I've got these two functions here forming this region from 0 to 6. And on any strip here, we're going to build a square that comes out of the screen right towards you. And here's what that looks like. So here's our region. There's our strip. And I'm going to rotate into three dimensions. And we're going to build on that strip a square. And here is that square. And the length of the square is just the difference between the two curves. And of course, its height is the same as its, as its length. I'll animate this strip so that you can see all the variety of squares that are formed. And collectively, they're going to form a speaker. And here is that speaker visualized. Here's the bottom of the speaker. 
here's the top of the speaker, and then here is the left side and the right side. Maybe I'll leave it open on this end so that you can see the variety of squares that are filling the volume of the speaker. So again, if you can visualize this three-dimensional object while looking at the two-dimensional region, it really helps you set up your integrals for volume. And I'll go back now to the handout, and let's see if we can set this up. So the area of a square is just s squared, and of course s in this problem is just the difference between the two functions. We'll give that square some thickness with a dx, and then we'll integrate to add them all up. So what we'll be doing on our calculators is integrating from 0 to 6, and then I have my two functions in y1 and y2. So now we're going to integrate just y1 minus y2 quantity squared. And when you evaluate that integral, you get about 100.232. And again, you get some sort of cubic unit. All right. Now, rather than building squares, let's build on this same region equilateral triangles. So here's the same region defined between the same two curves, but now we're going to build equilateral triangles, and what we're going to get is a camping tent. And here is that camping tent. So same region. Now it's rotated so we can see it in three dimensions, and I will put an equilateral triangle on that strip. There it is. And I will animate that strip so that we can see the whole variety of equilateral triangles that are formed. And they're forming what looks like a camping tent. And here is the bottom of the tent. And then here is the one side of the tent. And here's the other side. I could even put the back and the front on here, but maybe I'll leave them off so that you can just see more easily this variety of triangles that are filling the volume of the tent. So all we have to do is get the area of the triangle, give it some thickness with dx, and then add them all up by integrating. So I'll go back to the handout and we'll set that up. So perhaps you remember from your geometry days that the area of an equilateral triangle is the square root of 3 over 4 times the side length squared. And we could derive that in class in the coming days if you'd like to get a little refresher on that. But there's the area of an equilateral triangle. And then if you give it some thickness, you now have the volume of a triangular slice. And then we're adding them all up by integrating. And so we're integrating that expression. I would pull out the fraction in front so that we're not dealing with it in the integral. And then we're integrating from 0 to 6. Again, I would put the two functions that are defining this length into y1 and y2. And then we're just doing y1 minus y2 quantity squared dx. And that volume is 43.402, and again, cubic units. All right, our last example, and this one, I'm going to take a region and form a loaf of bread. So here's the region. This is almost looks like the base of a loaf of bread, and it has some symmetry, but here are the two functions that define the region, and the region goes from 0 all the way out to 8. And what we're going to build on here are semicircles. And again, the semicircles are going to come off the page right towards you, and that will be the diameter of a semicircle, that strip right there. So here that is in three dimensions. So there's our region. I'm going to rotate it into three dimensions, and I'm going to put a semicircle on that strip. So here it is. And I'm going to animate that so you can see the whole variety of semicircular slices. And it's hard not to look at a at a loaf of sliced bread and not think about calculus, because each of those slices is forming a little piece of the volume of the bread, of the loaf. So there they all are. There's an infinite supply of slices here. And then here's what the whole loaf looks like. Here's the bottom of the loaf. Here's the top of the loaf. And here is the semicircular contour, just so you can see it as it moves through. So we're adding up a whole bunch of semicircles to get the volume of this loaf. So let's do that on the handout. So here is the area for any semicircle. We're going to give our semicircular, semicircles some thickness by multiplying by dx. And then we're going to add them all up with an integral. So we're going to be integrating from 0 to 8, 1 half pi r squared dx. I would pull out the 1 half pi 
and then you're integrating from 0 to 8. And then we're integrating this expression squared. Well, 1 half, when it gets squared, is 1 fourth. So that 1 half now becomes a 1 eighth, and we still have our pi out in front. And then we have to square r, and when you square r, all we're left now to square is just f minus g, and I would probably put f in y1 and g in y2, so that inside my integral, I'm only typing their difference squared, and I'm not typing in these messy functions. So what I'm hoping you can take away from today is that when you look at a at a two-dimensional region and you're told how it's going to be used to create a three-dimensional object that you can visualize those three-dimensional objects. And we'll practice the details over the next week, few weeks in class, but I'm hoping that gives you a little bit of intuition about where we're headed. And that's it.